Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd, and today we're going to be talking about the different types of bayonets you can get for your Spanish Setmi L. Um, so earlier you may have seen two different types of these green scabbard bayonets um, in my Setmi L accessories. They're essentially the same bayonet. Um, I ended up getting rid of one because it wasn't in the best of shape. Um, but since then, I had discovered another type of set me bayonet and kind of decided to get on the interwebs and see what information was out there on these and really not a whole lot of information at all luckily i kind of was asking around and had some people give me some info and links to um i've come across at least one um, i don't know if you'd call it an article but some information about these um set me bayonets and of course it was in spanish and i needed to translate it but essentially what i discovered is that there are three types um, of bayonets for the Set Me L. Now, what I would call the Type 1 or the early is what they used on the pre series um, Set Me Ls. Um, and it was very different from these. You're probably not going to find any of those in the US. And from what I understand, they're not even interchangeable with the, uh, the later, the actual full production Set Me Ls. So essentially, what you're going to find in the US is gonna be what I'm calling a type two and your type three. Now I've never seen anyone refer to them in these ways, but I feel like that's just kind of the easiest to go over the history of these. Um, and then also you will have a difference in color of scabbard, at least for the type three, this might only apply to the type three. I am not positive on this, but if you have a black scabbard like this, it's actually for the Navy, or you could have a green scabbard like this for the army. And I'll get into that a little bit if I remember as to why I think that might just apply to the Type 3, but I am not positive on that. Um, so let's talk about the Type 1, which is the one that I do not have here present. Um, essentially what that was is very closely similar to our Type 2. The scabbard from everything I can tell is the same as what's on here. The only difference on that one is our bayonet locking latch here is actually just like a single little piece of metal, like a leaf spring almost. Um, and you just push in on the bottom of that to remove it. There's nothing on the other side of this hilt. Is that the proper term for this? I'm not really a blade guy. Um, but there's nothing on this side at all. And you don't have a button. It's just a little kind of a spring um, clasp that you, it looks like you just push on the bottom to attach it onto the bayonet. Um, but other than that, it is similar to the type 2. Now I did come across some information. The type 1 um, will have an A before the serial number on it. These are serial numbered. I'm not sure if those are actually matching to um, serials on the guns as well. But that pre-series will have an A in front of the serial number and all of the serial numbers are below a thousand as well. But like I said, the most obvious difference is the, that little funky clasp for the uh, locking mechanism there. So our Type 2 is identical to the Type 1 other than this locking lever here, which is kind of a little more traditional, you know, push button locking lever. Now, the Set Me L did replace the Set Me C, and I've got one of those bayonets right here. These bayonets are very easy to find as they made a lot more of the Set Me C than they did the L. The L was kind of a flop for the Spanish military, and I go over that in my Set Me L um, history and first impressions video. Um, but this one, I mean, it's a different setup, but the same idea. This doesn't have that little spring funky bit that the Type 1 had. And I'm not sure if the Type 1 just simply had that for, I don't know, proof of concept that you can get a bayonet on the, uh, the pre-series Ls. And from what I've seen, there's also variations in those pre series L's as well, like they're still kind of figuring stuff out. It might have just been a cost cutting measure um, that they did, but you can see this, the, the grip here is put on much the same way as what you have on the Set Me C. You got two rivets in the front and two rivets in the back there. Also just to note, this is also an Army uh, Set Me C bayonet, as you can tell by the Eagle roll mark. Um, that's kind of your sure way to see um, what branch of the military your bayonet was intended for. And then on the other side, we have our Set Me logo. 
and the ET, which basically is like Spanish land forces or Earth Army ground forces, and a serial number. And the scabbard for this, as far as I can tell, is identical to these scabbards. They are interchangeable. Um, and they seem to be the same. So here's that. So there you go. And then, of course, on the C's, you can find these new old stock bayonets fairly easily. They'll usually have this little cord tied to them. This was also advertised as new old stock. Whereas the Setney L, the Army bayonet here, um, I have not seen any of those being listed as new old stock. Um, for the most part, they seem to be pretty well used. Um, and that's kind of part of the reason I jumped on this Type 2 here, because it's new old stock. But as you can see here, the blade is very different from the kind of bolo cut style on the C. We have our ET and serial number and the set me mark. And then we have the military um, eagle once again. It kind of has a cross overlay there. Um, so also while we're talking about the locking latch, I'm sure some people are curious, or are these interchangeable with the very similar HKG3 or 33 or 93 um, bayonets and their locking mechanism is completely different. As you can see, the lug's actually kind of on the bayonet itself. This is kind of an oddball one from Pakistan, but the uh, locking lever is the same as any of your other HK. So it's, it is different from the Set Me C and the Set Me L. And once again, the Set Me L bayonets are not, you cannot put them on um, a set me C rifle that will not lock into the bayonet lug properly. Um, and the uh, set me L bayonet or the set me C bayonets will not lock onto the set me L's. So there's just kind of a quick show of the type two that is definitely an army. The reason I say I'm not sure if the Navy type twos came with a black scabbard or a green one is because I did come across at least one listing um, specifically for a Navy Set Me L bayonet, and that was the Type 2 style, this one right here. And the picture had it in a green scabbard. I thought maybe they're just using kind of a generic picture. Um, but I was reading the description, and in the description, it does state that it comes with a green scabbard. That's why I'm not sure if the color change came until the Type 2 or not. I'm not positive on that at all. So if you guys know, let, uh, let me know. Leave a comment. This particular one ended up coming from Sportsman Guide. Um, this at the time was a really good deal, it was like 44 bucks. No place had them available really for under the under $70. The prices on these are super wild and like all over the place. I did hop online right before making this video. And right now the price range seems to be from $40 to $70. And that's going to be for a used Type 2 style um, bayonet. Um, some of them are going for like 75 bucks that are used and look like this. Um, and some of the places that were selling these, those 40 is actually kind of a, a, a July sale. Um, and I think their regular price was listed as 60 or 70. So once again, still pretty high price. But then we have the Type 3 here. This one definitely did have a scabbard color change depending on whether it was for the Army, which would have had the green or a black for the Navy. This one, as you can see, is new old stock. I did get this from RTG um, Gun Parts for 60 bucks, which was a little bit more than I paid for uh, this bayonet here. The other one that I got that was pretty worn, and you can see that in my Set Me L Accessories video, that one I purchased from Apex Gun Parts. Um, is advertised as um, being good, but it was, it was worn quite a bit more than this, it was missing a lot more of the uh, the bluing or just the black finish there. It also had like little like hatch marks in it. It was fairly beat up, however the scabbard was nicer. This is actually the scabbard that came with that, but I got that from Apex Gun Parts, um, and that one was 50 bucks. And so I kind of just ended up swapping the crap, the slightly more crappier scabbard that came with this bayonet um, to that the nicer bayonet. And I did look at both of the bayonets very closely before I handed it off to my friend. And the scabbards themselves are identical. The markings on the bayonet were identical. This is just 
some sticky stuff left behind by a sticker at some point. So our type three, this guy here, I mean, the blade is the same. The finish, I do think is a slightly different finish. Now this is a little shiny because I just put some, uh, that Birchwood KC, oh, I forget what it's called, not the gun scrubber, but some other little finish they have. And I just kind of like to put that on some of my blades. Gives them a little bit of prote protection. Um, but this was kind of a very matte, um, very parkerized looking blade and feel. It just kind of felt like a chalkboard, you know? So I think the finish was changed a little bit on these, as well as you can see, this has the two rivets and this just has a single roll pin on both the front and the back there. The other difference is our locking release lever. While it's still a button, it's still the same idea. The back piece you can see is a little more recessed in where this is kind of flush. And then the buttons are completely different shapes. I think they're the same size, um, but that one's kind of, you can see the, the contour of those are quite a bit different. And also, it's a really hard to see, but that is apparently the Navy anchor. And from what I've been looking around to, some of the people that have got these from um, RTG, it pretty much looks like all of them have really light stampings. Um, on the blade so that kind of sucks and then you can see a super super light set me mark there which if you're curious what that looks like it roughly looks like what the Mark Lamar has used to kind of mix in their own logo but that gear and the sword of course it doesn't say MCM that's Mark Lamar's touch to it and then on this one we got the serial number and it's once again very lightly marked, but you can kind of see FN, which from my, my understanding is, here I go pronouncing Spanish words that I can't pronounce, stands for Fuerza Naval, or Naval Force. Can you tell I flunked out of Spanish? Um, so these have the FN mark on it, whereas the Army ones will have the ET mark on it which I've gone over this before, and that basically, from my understanding, stands for like Dirt Army or Earth Army, basically land forces or land army. And that is Ejerto de Terra. I apologize to all of my Spanish viewers out there for butchering this pronunciation. But um, yeah, so there you go, I have not seen any of the type threes for the army available once again i just kind of recently became aware of the different variations you can get from what i've seen the most common is going to be your type two um, with green scabbard and the few people that are talking about these they pretty much are all saying that they are army bayonets but like i said i did come across that one listing for type two that was supposed to be for the navy um, and came with a green bandit, and the, the actual description mentioned, or excuse me, came with the green bandit scabbard, and the actual listing, you know, mentioned that it did come with a green scabbard. So the color changes on the uh, scabbards may have only come about for the type three. Now, in case anyone is interesting, if you just collect bandits about the dimensions on these, the overall length is going to be about 14 inches, or 35 and a half centimeters. Our grip length here is about five inches or 13 centimeters. And then the blade length is about nine inches or 23 centimeters for anyone interested in those little details. So just wanted to put this out there. Um, thought it was interesting. There's different kinds of bayonets. And the one thing I was really happy about finding a new old stock bayonet is I typically like to get a worn, you know, bayonet. I don't like to get the new old stock stuff like my Set Me C bayonet. As a matter of fact, I really couldn't even find a used Set Me C bayonet. All I could find was that new old stock. Um, you know, because they've got wear to them, just like my surplus, you know, pistols and rifles. I don't know what the story is that goes with that wear, but it has a story. It's not just something that 
was news sitting in a box in a warehouse forever. Um, and I enjoy, you know, matching up a bayonet that's kind of got some good wear to it to a gun that has some good wear to it. Both have stories I'll never know. However, it kind of sucked having this one. Even though the wear is not too bad on this, it looked a little goofy on my Set Me C since that's a surplus build. It's a new production using old parts. So it's nice and clean. It's got a fresh Cerakote finish on it. And it just looked a little goofy with this bayonet. You know, it's completely worn. Not that I have it on the gun a lot. I know this sounds stupid um, or that I'll be ever using it. But if I'm going to have something that goes along with a rifle and match it, I want it to match it. You know what I mean? And so when I saw that these were available, that made me very happy because this goes along with a brand new Mark Lamar built or Hill and Mac built, you know, set me L that doesn't really have any wear on it. You know, this is like in pristine shape. So that made me pretty happy. The other thing I thought was kind of funny is going back to the pre-series L and what um, the Type 1 Bandit that they used, I was looking at some images, and a lot of them are green and look pretty much like the modern Set Me L that we know. But some of them, I'm assuming the early pre-series Ls, looked not radically different, but quite a bit different. Um, they would have the HK-style rear drum sight on them. Um, they used a different magazine. I don't know if it was proprietary to the pre-series or if it was just a different shape than what the, you know, the kind of uh, stand egg mag pattern they ended up going after. Some of them, the mag well looks a little bit shorter. Um, so it's kind of more of an AR length um, insertion on the mag well. And what kind of blew me away is I kind of made a set me or a pre set me L clone or a copy. I mean, it's not perfect, but it looks like that's what I was going for. Um, because some of them, had a the gun was actually had a black finish whereas most of them would have a green finish as well as the actual production ones and they would still have the green furniture on the gun it wouldn't you know be matching black furniture with the gun and on top of that i have another video on it but they had a full length handguard that they used early on in the set me l production and kind of very quickly switched to a shorter handguard to get a little more air cooling on there and, well, <laughs> the one particular picture I came across of the pre-series Set Me L, I mean, it was like this. I had the full-length handguard. The gun itself was black. It had a proprietary kind of looking mag that was like a mix between this and the HK G3 aluminum style looking mag. Of course, it had that rear drum sight. But black with green furniture full-length handguard obviously it wouldn't have the uh, rail up top here but I kind of accidentally made a pre-series L copy which I promise you was not what I was going for I didn't really discover this image until after I had this guy assembled and of course I cannot complete the video without putting the bayonet on here so This is what that looks like there. Much better than one that's kind of worn. Of course, also if the green matched a little bit better, you know, it's got that really nice two-tone green going effect. And the black scabbard really just kind of adds to that. So pretty happy. Um, I'm filming this July 2nd, I think. So if you're wanting to ban it, go check out RTG Gun Parts. I do not know how long they will have these new old stock Navy Type 3 patterned bayonets. But they do right now. And they're pretty stinking nice. I was very happy with this purchase here. So just want to let you guys be aware of that. Give you what little information I have on this bayonet because I don't really have much. Oh, <laughs> And this might help. From what I could find, the model number for this bayonet is M4333. But that's really <laughs> all the information I could find on top of one very small description and with some photos that was all in Spanish. So 
Anyways, that concludes this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting or helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And of course, as always, stay safe, stay shiny. Have a good one.